Good afternoon. My name is Bill Kramer. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Pocono Foundation, and I want to welcome you to the 29th Lehigh Valley Pocono Foundation Grants and Scholarship Ceremony as it is again broadcast in virtual format. I certainly wish it could have been live. For many years we had it live, and it was just a thrilling experience in those times, and I hope you'll enjoy the day today as you witness the grants that are presented as well as the scholarships that are awarded. Our speakers this afternoon will be a combination of videotaped and live individuals. I uh, look at this event each year in June and it rem reminds me of Christmas in a sense because we have wonderful speakers, we have wonderful personal interest stories, and it's just wonderful, I should say, when recipients of the nursing scholarships receive their awards and, and make their acceptance speeches. And also to acknowledge the many human service charitable organizations we have in Monroe County who do so much for all of us. The Medical Center takes great pride in being a good community member and supporting all of the charities as well as obviously supporting the community with the patients that we serve. To start our presentations today, it is my pleasure to introduce Annie Noveski, who is the Vice Chair of the Pocono Foundation, who will begin with our community presentations of the grants. Annie. Thank you, Bill. I am thrilled and honored to be here with you this afternoon. As a volunteer member and vice chair of the Pocono Foundation Board of Directors, I have come to learn firsthand the incredible impact that our foundation has on improving the quality of life for those we serve, both here at Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono and through the nonprofit organizations we support across the community. These resources are only possible due to the extraordinary generosity of our donors. 13 community grants will be presented this year, and you will hear from a few recipients who will share how the grants they received will make a difference in the lives of people right here in the Poconos. We will begin this afternoon's program with the Dr. Klaus G. Jordan Endowment Grants. Dr. Klaus G. Jordan came to the Poconos in 1933 from the University of Pennsylvania, becoming the first surgeon at our hospital and practiced medicine at LVH Pocono until 1983. His contributions to our organization were integral to advancing medical care in our community. The accomplishments of Dr. Klaus and his first wife, Dr. Charlotte Jordan, were so extraordinary that in 1976, the hospital addition was named the Jordan Pavilion in 1977. Upon Dr. Klaus's death in July 1995, his family, led by his late son and daughter-in-law, Dr. Henry and Barbara Jordan, established the Dr. Klaus G. Jordan Endowment to provide resources for innovative human service programs and medical staff education. The Jordan family continued their passion for the fund through their philanthropy and support of this endowment. We thank Mrs. Barbara Jordan, her son Michael, and his family for the generational commitment to giving. It is my honor to introduce Wills Jordan, great-grandson of Dr. Klaus Jordan, who will share his remarks about the fund. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wills Jordan. I'm the grandson of Dr. Henry Jordan and the great-grandson of Dr. Klaus Jordan. While I wish I could be with you in person, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Dr. Klaus G. Jordan Endowment Fund. My grandfather was instrumental in establishing the fund to continue the legacy of giving back and supporting those who work tirelessly to improve health care and make a difference in the local community. Dr. Klaus Jordan was the first surgeon to practice at Pocono Medical Center. For 50 years, he was a force in the community, practicing medicine and helping the hospital grow into the regional hospital it is today. Both men were steadfast in their belief that they could change the way that people think about and approach the importance of the health and well being of a community. They believed that organizations, leaders, and innovative programs, like the ones being recognized today, in the field of medicine and community outreach, were essential to continuing advances in medicine and providing the best health care to friends, neighbors, and family. Nowhere was this truer than right here at Pocono Medical Center and in the surrounding Monroe County community. We are living in uncertain and challenging times. 
Now more than ever, our communities rely on the services and programs that are being recognized today. And most importantly, supporting the people whose compassion, dedication, and selflessness impact the well-being of our communities. I know I speak for my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and other members of the Jordan family when I extend our deepest gratitude to all of you for your good work. Congratulations and our very best wishes for good health now and in the future. Thank you, Wills, for those thoughtful and beautiful remarks. Ten grants are being awarded from the Dr. Klaus G. Jordan Endowment today, and they include American Red Cross for their Disaster Relief Program, Center for Vision Loss, now Sites for Hope, for assistant technology for low-income families with severe vision loss. Developmental Education Services of Monroe County for American Heart Saver Training for the community. Family Promise of Monroe County for their Homeless Youth Program, ages 18 to 25. Friendly Community Center for technology for online classes. Pleasant Valley Economical Network for feminine hygiene products for needy families. Pocono Area Transitional Housing, temporary housing to homeless families, and a budgeting program. Salvation Army East Stroudsburg Corps for transformative rapid housing and homelessness prevention program. Street to Feet Outreach Service for homelessness transition and life skills training. And Women's Resources of Monroe County for their resilience workshops for families affected by domestic abuse. Two of our recipients, Sites for Hope and Family Promise of Monroe County, will now share their thoughts about unique programs funded by the Jordan Endowment. First, we will hear from Christine Konosby for Sites for Hope. Good evening, my name is Christy Konopitsky and I'm the Director of Advancement at Sites for Hope, formerly Center for Vision Loss. Sites for Hope is a nonprofit serving the Lehigh Valley and Monroe County. We promote healthy vision and we support individuals living with visual impairments. We want to thank the Pocono Foundation for the grant awards we've received through the Dr. Klaus Jordan Endowment. We are so grateful for the opportunity to continue to positively impact so many community members. In the past, these grants have gone towards our services, such as guided transportation, and this year we are happy to apply the funds to our client help fund. Um, we've been working together in this collaborative way since 2013, and we're really happy to continue the tradition. And here with me today is our Director of Services, Jennifer Pandolfo, to explain a little bit more about the fund and how it impacts our clients. Thank you, Christy. Our Client Help Fund helps our clients get low vision devices that they otherwise wouldn't be able to afford because most insurances do not cover the cost of these low vision devices. So we're able to help them get things like electronic magnifiers, sunglasses, kitchen aids, talking glucose meters, talking clocks, iPads that have a ton of accessibility for the visually impaired, as well as we were able to help one woman be able to get Zoom text on her computer, which her allowed her to obtain and maintain employment in a customer service job with otherwise she would not be able to have without that software. So we'd like to again thank the Pocono Foundation and the Dr. Klaus Jordan Endowment Fund for allowing us to be able to continue the good work we do. So thank you. Christy, thank you for the important work that you do. And now we will hear from Edith Logan, Family Promise of Monroe County. I want to thank the Pocono Foundation and the Dr. Klaus Jordan Fund for this grant award today. My name is Enid Logan. I'm the Executive Director of Family Promise of Monroe County. For the past 13 years, we've been pro providing emergency shelter, meals, support services, and critical case management to at-risk and homeless children in our community. This past year, we've seen an unprecedented need for these services. Two years ago, we sheltered 22 families. Last year, we sheltered 86 families, including 35 homeless individuals and an additional four homeless youth, age 18 to 24. 
Three of those 18-year-olds aged out of foster care and were put out on the street. One was a transgender individual. Fortunately, we were able to reconnect the three 18-year-olds with distant relatives, one in California. Our case manager drove her to Philadelphia Airport for a direct flight out to California where she reunited with her grandmother. The two individuals found family here in the community. We also sheltered a 19-year-old homeless woman with a five-month-old child. We found her an apartment and she was able to continue with support from Family Promise. Across Pennsylvania, the number of homeless youth has increased 30% over the past two years. We've seen this play out here in Monroe County. We thank the Pocono Foundation and the Dr. Jordan Fund for recognizing this need in the community. And with Family Promise, we will work to assist these individuals because we believe everyone deserves a home. Enid, thank you for the incredible work you do for our community. Our next grant is the Dr. Alberta Finch Endowment. The late Dr. Alberta Finch moved to the Poconos in 1962 with her husband, Dr. Otto Weber, and practiced family medicine until 1986 when she and her husband became medical missionaries to Africa. She returned to Strasbourg in 1990, and in 1993, she volunteered to provide pediatric care in Pocono Medical Center's clinic. That clinic has become the LVPG pediatric practice at three locations in our community. In honor of her incredible service, Pocono Foundation established the Dr. Alberta Finch Children's Endowment to provide grants to human service programs in our community that focus on children's health. Unfortunately, our beloved Dr. Finch passed away in July 2015. Her two sons, Dr. Jeffrey and Phil Weber, will now share some thoughts about their mother and what this grant means to the family. The Finch Endowment is uh, to offer grants every year to persons and organizations who help children and do work in the community that benefits children. I can remember one of my earliest memories was one time, because uh, I was the youngest of the family and there was quite a few years separation, and Phil and everyone else was out at college or away already, but I was there and my dad was off at a conference in Philly and it was winter and there was a big winter storm. And I can remember my mom having to pack me up in the middle of the night one time and we drove down to her office on Garden Street and there at her office were these two kids just huddled and right at the doorstep and they were half frozen and she opened up the office, we got the kids in and she fed them, made a meal, some soup right then and there in the kitchen that was in the back of the office and called uh, Child Social Services, who was uh, Charlie, uh, Mr. Charlie Jones at the time, and he came down. And her passion constantly, and it was one thing that I always recall, was helping children and working with children. That's one reason she put her office there on Garden Street for the children in need there. That's why she built the swing set out there outside of her office and the sandbox, that's why she made sure her office had lots of toys. And she was really always focused on that and she would go out of her way to care for it. That's been her whole focus and it really is quite a privilege for both Phil and I to, to be able to still be a part of this all these years later and to see her intent and her ideas carry on in so many wonderful ways. Thank you, Phil and Jeff, for those wonderful memories of your mother. I would now like to introduce this year's recipients of the Dr. Alberta Finch Grants, Family Promise of Monroe County for Child Care for Shelter Families, the Garden of Giving Incorporated for building child education site to increase awareness for healthy food, 
and the Salvation Army of East Stroudsburg for fresh fruit and vegetables for those with food insecurities. It is my pleasure to now introduce Major Gilbert Parkhurst, Salvation Army, East Stroudsburg Corps, who will speak to the Finch Grant to provide a healthy fresh fruit and vegetables program for those with food insecurities. Good evening. I'm Major Gilbert Parkhurst uh, from the Salvation Army in East Stroudsburg. I want to thank you tonight uh, for the support that you give to the Salvation Army, especially to our healthy uh, meals program. We want to thank those that have donated to the Dr. Alberta Finch Children's Health Endowment Fund. With the funds we receive from that, we're able to provide healthy meals to children in our community. Some folks will say, well, what difference does that make to the, to the children? Well, many times when the children uh, come into our program, the parents have no idea what a healthy meal is. Their meals are based on their income. So very little health in that, and they just find what they can at the lowest prices. So a McDonald's or Burger King may be all that they know. So with the support that we receive from donors such as you and the foundation, the partnerships that we have um, with the farmer's market and the community, we're able to work uh, with the families and teach them uh, what, what a healthy meal is and how they can provide that to the family on a fixed income. This year, because of your support, we'll be able to provide over 1,500 meals uh, to the, those in need in our community, and that's healthy meals. That will include uh, fruits, vegetables. Um, I remember when I first got married, I didn't eat yogurt. You know, I didn't like yogurt at all until my wife, you know, started getting me on it a little bit and I didn't realize how good it was for you. And we see that also with the clients that come in. The first time that we offer them yogurt, they're like, oh no, we don't want that. But then as you work with them, again, that's part of the education process and we work with them, they'll understand that it's good for them and that they can provide that to their family uh, on, a, on a fixed income. And again, we can only do that through the support that we receive from donors such as you. So on behalf of not just myself or the Salvation Army, but on behalf of the clients that come in, we want to say thank you for your support. Thank you, Major Parkhurst. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mary Ann Cortez Rubino, Vice President of Patient Services at Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono, who will speak about our EMS Hero Fund. Thank you, Annie. As an organization, we have the greatest respect for our EMS providers here in the Pocono region. These first responders are truly saving lives so they can be treated here in our emergency department at LVH Pocono. There has always been a partnership that exists between LVH Pocono emergency department and our trauma staff and our EMS providers. This is why we continue to hold our EMS Heroes event, to support these courageous men and women with funding that improves their ability to serve our community. Our funding supports the unique training and equipment needed by our EMS providers. Hosting the annual EMS Heroes event is just one way our organization expresses our gratitude and support for the vital services they provide. It is now my pleasure to introduce Jonathan McCombs, President of Monroe County Ambulance Association. Good evening, my name is Jonathan McCombs and I am the President of the Ambulance Association. We want to give a special thanks to the Pocono Foundation and all those who continue to support the HERO event. Over the past five years, we have been able to raise over $75,000, which has been evenly distributed amongst the EMS agencies for training, equipment, and continued maintenance of our vehicles so we can continue to best serve our community. Emergency medicine is definitely a team effort, and we cannot be more proud of our partnership with Lehigh Valley Pocono. So once again, on behalf of the Ambulance Association, we want to thank everyone for their continued support, and we very much look forward to our ongoing partnership so that we can continue to best serve the Monroe County community. Thank you, Jonathan. I would now like to bring back Annie, who will introduce the recipients of our Pocono Foundation and Community Health Endowments. Thank you, Marianne. 
Our LVPG Pediatrics and Family Medicine Services, led by Dr. Victor Catania, has applied for funding through the Pocono Foundation to start a Reach Out and Read program at our family medicine provider locations. This nationally recognized program will greatly improve our service and care to families we serve in the Pocono market. I am now pleased to introduce Dr. Catania, who will share more about this valuable program. Good evening, I'm Dr. Victor Catania. I'm a family physician at the East Stroudsburg Health Center, as well as the medical director for LVPG Pocono. I just wanted to take a few moments to talk to you all and thank the foundation for partnering with us about an exciting program that we're absolutely thrilled to, be, to roll out to all of our patients in the coming weeks. Uh, thanks to a generous uh, partnership with the foundation, we are pleased to announce that we are now going to be rolling out Reach Out and Read to all of our primary care slash pediatric practices uh, here at Pocono. So I just want to speak briefly about what the program is. Uh, Reach Out and Read is a national program that partners with healthcare networks, private practices, with the goal about improving childhood literacy. Um, as many of you are aware of, the whole premise behind improving childhood literacy rates is that there have been ample studies that have shown that it improves uh, scholastic imp performance, it improves economic uh, downstream effects as well, increases the likelihood of children of graduating high school as well as seeking higher education afterwards. Um, through this partnership, what we're looking to do is we'll be able to provide this vital service to all of our family medicine practices, our pediatric practices, as well as our internal medicine pediatric practices as well. Uh, the whole premise and the goal behind the this uh, foundation, this program rather, I'm sorry, is that we will be providing age appropriate free books at every well child visit for our patients starting at ages of six months all the way through and inclusive to the five year well child visit as well. I can't even stress the impact we're talking about here in terms of the ability for the foundation, for the network, for our providers to tell our patients that not only do we care about your health and well-being, but we want to invest into your child's future. And by doing this, we're able to provide a small library of books to children at absolutely no cost to the patient whatsoever. I am so incredibly thankful to the foundation for partnering with us and providing us the ability to bring this as first to market for our patients, and I cannot wait to see the appreciation and the excitement from our providers and our patients as well when we get this program up and running. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Catania, for spearheading this important program and all you do for this community. Another valuable program funded through our foundation is the Nurse Family Partnership, which serves first time and often single mothers who are in crisis. Providing stable support for this vulnerable part of our population is critical to both the baby and mother's well-being. Here to tell us more about the program is Teresa Zuba, manager, LVH, Pocono Nurse Family Partnership. Hi, my name is Terry Zuba and I am the manager for Nurse Family Partnership, Lehigh Valley, Pocono. Nurse Family Partnership works with the most vulnerable population low-income, first-time moms. It's been part of the Lehigh Valley Pocono family for 19 years. Mothers are matched with their very own nurse who follows them from pregnancy until the child's second year birthday. Our goals for the program are healthy pregnancy, healthy school-ready child, and self-sufficiency. Our nurses, who I am so proud of, offer support, encouragement, and education to these moms. Nurse Family Partnership changes lives. Last week, I received a phone call from one of our moms. She graduated three years ago. She told me how grateful she was for the program and how she appreciated the support of her nurse. She recently started her own business and wanted her nurse to know. She accomplished her dream. NFP, Nurse Family Partnership, encourages our moms to dream. We want them to break the cycle of poverty. I want to thank the Foundation for their support of the Nurse Family Partnership Program and for partnering with us to make a difference in the lives of the families we serve. By working together, we can make a difference in the lives of the most vulnerable population, 
low income first time moms. Thank you. Teresa, thank you for all you do. One final area of support I would like to recognize is the generosity of our community during the recent pandemic. Our COVID relief fund raised thousands of dollars in support of frontline heroes and care to our patients. Here to tell us more about how these funds were utilized is the coordinator of infection control, Jennifer Hess. Hi, good evening. My name is Jennifer Hess. I'm the coordinator of the infection prevention program at Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono. Back in March 2020, the COVID pandemic had a dramatic impact on our hospital and was like anything we had ever seen in the past. As a hospital, we are thankful to the community for your support towards the COVID-19 relief fund. Your donations allowed us to purchase air scrubber units for many hospital rooms, including our intensive care unit, our emergency department, and operating rooms that housed our COVID-19 patients. This critical equipment allows us to contain potentially infected air particles and prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus to other patients and help keep our frontline heroes safe. Your generosity has allowed us to improve the healthcare we provide to our sickest and most vulnerable patients. We are internally grateful for your support and dedication to our hospital and look forward to continuing to serve the Pocono region with the highest level of quality care. Thank you, Jennifer, for the very inspiring message. The General Hospital in Monroe County was founded in 1915. That's 105 years ago. And since that time, it's been supported by a very caring community. And make no mistake about it, philanthropic enterprise has been very instrumental in the ability to provide world-class health care close to home. It has played such a significant role, and most notably, we've had the Cardiovascular Institute, we've had the Jordan Pavilion, we've had and the uh, Dale and Francis Hughes Cancer Center. All of these would not have been made possible without a caring community and your support. Those of you in that viewing audience that know what it means to be able to have your health care right here without having to travel great distances and getting the kind of care and quality care that is noted all over the country right here in the, at Pocono Hospital. Uh, at this time, it's my true pleasure to be part of uh, the ceremony and to be witness to the granting of the William B. Kramer Medical Equipment, Staff Equipment uh, Fund Endowment. The hospital provides a lot of care. The community provides great philanthropic support, but there's still a need when we don't have the budget sometimes to provide certain equipment to the, to the doctors that they can make an application to the medical equipment fund that bears my name, and I'm grateful for that. Um, and when they do so, they submit an application, and we look at those applications. We have a committee, and since 2008, that committee has been responsible for granting a, and awarding over $500,000 worth of equipment that's been necessary to help and serve for the medical care of the people of Monroe County. Um, once again, the selection committee had a very difficult task. Decisions were made from excellent presentations, very competitive applications, and very passionate presentations. And I'm pleased to announce the fact that we've given three awards, two of the first two grants, which are, were granted to Dr. Victor Contagna. That is for two new Renovu scanners. Now, the Renovu scanner is something that would be able to diagnose and to screen for diabetic retinopathy and uh, in an ambulatory setting. So it was very critical to find out early on if you had any eye issues because many patients have diabetes and they don't realize that they may have uh, diabetic retinopathy. And they don't realize it until they have a vision loss or they have a, a problem with eye, eye irritation or changes in their vision. And what's critical is they have early diagnosis for that and they can, can look at the risk and control factors that will be helpful in preventing loss or blindness. The third grant is to awarded to Dr. Marianne Devine. She's the critical care medicine at, at Pocono. It's called a Hamilton G5 ventilator with Helox capabilities. Now, when we're alive, I didn't have to go through any of this information because the doctor was responsible to be here and explain to everyone what I was trying to pronounce. And many of these things have a very technical name, but it was a lot of fun to find out exactly what they do and why it is critical to the mission and the vision of the hospital to be able to, to have this equipment for their benefit. But we're fortunate enough to have, and I'm going to introduce 
Melissa Puhak, a respiratory care supervisor at LVH Pocono, who will share how this device will benefit our hospital and the patients we serve. Hi, um, and good evening. My name is Melissa Puhak, and I am the respiratory supervisor for Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono. And I wanted to start off by thanking everyone behind the Pocono Foundation, as well as the Kramer Equipment Committee, for allowing us to purchase the Hamilton G5 ventilator. This ventilator is very close to my heart. It means a lot. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the people of this community. It means a lot to the hospital. Um, by having this ventilator on site, we can now serve the people of this community. We don't have to send them out to other facilities because they're having breathing problems. This ventilator and the Heliox therapy that we can deliver with it, it helps people that are breathless. It helps people with low oxygen content in their blood. It helps people that are suffering because of muscle fatigue and just can't take that last breath. I have a daughter who suffers from asthma, and granted, she has never been on a ventilator, and I hope she never is, but if I had to choose a hospital, I would choose Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono because they have the capability to, to help her. We can keep our patients close to home. This is the only ventilator, the only facility in Monroe County that can offer this therapy. It means the world to many people, to many families, to many patients, to everybody in the community. If you have a loved one who is sick, why would you ever want to ship them 45 minutes away when you can keep them five minutes from your door? It just means the world to many, many people. We cannot thank you enough for helping us keep the people in Monroe County here close to home where we can help them every single day. I hope that we never have to use the ventilator to be honest with you, even though I'm sure we will, but the people that need to go on it and their family members will thank you over and over and over again just because they can come quickly and see their loved ones. If they're having any other problems, they're right there. They're just a quick phone call away and they can come into the hospital and they can see them. We can heal them, get them off the ventilator and get them back to that quality of life that they had before. It, it just means the world to not only myself, to the entire respiratory department, to the entire ICU department, to every physician, to every patient, to every single resident in Monroe County that may or may not need this ventilator one day. Um, I thank you again. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate everything that you have done for us. You, ca I can't thank you enough. I really can't for everything that you have done um, and the opportunity that you have given us so that we can give a better opportunity to the people out there in Monroe County. Um, I appreciate it and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Melissa, thank you very much for pursuing a career in medicine. I have to tell you that uh, I have every respect for those who care for our sick and our injured. Uh, I'm just grateful for our doctors, but I'm more importantly, I'm grateful for our nurses and our supervisory staff, our technicians who, who care for us each and every day and we, are, and we have that, that uh, ability to, to know that once we enter the doors of Pocono, uh, Ely High Valley Health Pocono, uh, we're going to be taken care of in a very exceptional way by caring and dedicated nurses as well as doctors. I'd like to congratulate all the recipients that uh, Annie Noveski spoke about, all those grant recipients, and now I'd like to move on to the Hospice House of Monroe County. Many of you in the viewing uh, audience may not know about the Hospice House of Monroe County, but it is of vital importance to our community that we have a place where people can be with their family in a, in a family residential setting in Monroe County where they can have end-of-life care. Many people think it's just for the person who is, it's, is ending their lives and, uh, and passing. But more importantly, it's for their family as well. And we have a beautiful facility uh, that is uh, dedicated to end-of-life care where it can not only be for, for hospice care, it can also be for respite care. And I urge anyone who is viewing this today to, to let people know about the Hospice House of Monroe County. It's of vital importance to all of our mission here that people can die in dignity, uh, surrounded by their family and friends in a residential setting. Having said that, I'd like to introduce <coughs> to you Mark Hudson. Mark Hudson is the director of the operations for hospice and health care, or home care, excuse me, uh, here in Monroe County. We had just received a LSA grant, which stands for local share uh, account, uh, to have a healing garden that's attached to the hospice house of Monroe County. And that is a place where 
uh, people can, who are there with their loved one who is in hospice care can go out. So with that, I introduce Mark Hudson. Good evening, my name is Mark Hudson, Director of Operations for Lehigh Valley Home Care and Hospice, Pocono. In the fall of 2020, we built a healing garden in the rear of Monroe County Hospice House. The garden was designed to provide a tranquil area for family and friends to come to remember and honor their loved ones. In the design, we planted shrubs and plants that are local to our area that will provide beauty, also attract birds and butterflies. We have a walkway leading from the parking lot into the garden area. Our plans are to line the uh, walkway with memorial bricks that individuals have purchased or can purchase in the future as a way to remember their loved ones. In the actual garden area, we have placed memorial bricks that individuals have purchased, leading from the rear entrance of the facility into the garden area. Prior to COVID, we held memorial services at the facility along with honoring our veterans on Veterans Day. Once things get back to normal, we'd like to continue to hold these services along with the dedication of the garden and also hold a butterfly release as a special way to remember loved ones at the facility. We thank Pocono Foundation and the community for your support, which allows us to provide additional services to the members of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for those very warm personal remarks. It is our hope that the people of, of Monroe County will recognize the, the need and, and use and make use of the hospice house. This beautiful new feature will help give peace and comfort to those and their families uh, and for the use of the hospice house in those very difficult times for all families. Once again, it's my uh, pleasure and I am pleased to introduce Mary Ann Cortez Rubino, the Vice President of Patient Services here at uh, Lehigh Valley Pocono, who will introduce this year's recipients of the nursing scholarships. Mary Ann. Thank you, Bill. In 1991, Mr. R. Dale Hughes funded the first endowed nursing scholarship at the then Pocono Medical Center. This gift set the pace for the multiple scholarships we present today. Mr. Hughes' goal was to recruit the best and brightest nurses to our hospital to help ensure outstanding medical care for our community. The Hughes family name is synonymous with giving and through their generosity have made an extraordinary mark on the Pocono region. A printer by trade, R. Dale Hughes sold the business in 1990 and retired to enjoy his hobbies of fishing and boating until his passing in August of 2002. His wife, Frances, also a generous philanthropist in our community, passed away in January of 2009. Our Dale and Frances Hughes Cancer Center exists due to the Hughes family's commitment to bring the finest oncology here to our region. The Hughes family made our community's first seven-figure gift in 2001 for an expansion of our first cancer center and then their son and daughter-in-law, Kevin and Pat Hughes, continue the family generosity in 2011 with an extraordinary gift for the current cancer center. We at Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono and the Pocono community owe a debt of gratitude to the Hughes family. I am pleased to introduce the 2020 recipient of the R. Dale Hughes Nursing Scholarship, Alexander Frage.
My name is Alexander Frage. I am the recipient of the R. Dale Hughes Nursing Scholarship. Um, I want to first say very, um, very humbled and thank you so much to the uh, Pocono Foundation and the Nursing Scholarship Committee for uh, um, granting me this opportunity because without this assistance it would be uh, much harder to continue with my education and um, to go forward. So a little bit about myself. Um, like I said, my name is Alexander. I um, went to Stroudsburg High School, and while I was there, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, of course, I was very young, but I had spent a lot of time in the athletic training office, and at that time, I um, began to be interested in um, even just basic skills, splinting, um, any kind of traumatic injuries, first aid, CPR. And I became first aid and CPR certified at that time. Um, I think I was around 17 years old. So I then went on and I pursued my uh, first bachelor's degree in biology from the University of Pittsburgh. Um, while I was there, again, I didn't know which direction I wanted to go. I just wanted to immerse myself and learn as much as I could. Um, I've always thought of myself as a lifelong learner. So to go through and just to soak it all up like a sponge, that was my goal. But alas, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So my senior year at Pitt, I got my EMS certification and I became an EMT. Uh, from that point on, I came back home uh, from Pittsburgh to Stroudsburg, and I started working with Suburban EMS as an EMT. Um, that was back in 2015, and I've been working there until now. Um, so then at that point, I realized after um, being there for that long that I needed to make a change. Um, that's because that I had uh, two children on the way, uh, my, my son and my daughter. Uh, twins, or Theo and Lena, and with that I knew that I would have an increased hardship um, to take care of them, take care of myself, and to provide. So I went back to school, um, and that's when I got accepted to the Accelerated BSN program at the, um, at the Sales University. And while I was there, it's, since I've been there, it's been very hard to continue because of having the children. Um, when I started, they were only five months old, both of them. Um, and I'm in a class with people who are 23 years old, um, 24 years old, I'm almost 30. So it's a little bit of a culture shock, but um, like I said, I, I take such value in my education and to be able to um, go through it, even with it being difficult at home, because um, of taking care of them at night and going to school during the day. So um, again, just this opportunity, it really does mean a lot because it really does take a lot of that burden off my shoulders and um, that of my family as well. So I do want to say thank you. Um, I look forward to being able to serve further um, when I do finish my nursing, which will be very soon, um, in the next two months from the time of this recording. And I look forward um, to serving as a nurse uh, now and to be able to give back. So again, thank you. Thank you, Alexander, for those thoughtful words. Our next recipient will be receiving the Jenny Kramer Nursing Scholarship. Quietly caring for others. These are the words that sum up the character of Jenny Kramer. In 1981, through a personal gift, her six children created the Jenny Kramer Nursing Scholarship Endowment to provide financial assistance to two outstanding students every year. I am pleased to present the first recipient of the 2021 Jenny Kramer Nursing Scholarship, Kelsey Fallwaller. Good evening, my name is Kelsey Fallwaller and I am the recipient of the Jenny Kramer Nursing Scholarship. I currently work at the Cardiac Cath Lab at Lehigh Valley Pocono. Um, during that time at the peak of the pandemic, we were asked to go over and help in the ICU and CVCU. Um, this is where we got to work alongside of seasoned nurses and doctors and see how they interact with patients and um, help them get through a very difficult time. And during my time over there, it had really inspired me to go back to nursing school because nurses are an advocate for their patients. Um, advocates, they stand up for them. They help them get through the most difficult times of their life, and that is something that I really would like to do. This scholarship is going to help me because the cost of school keeps increasing, and um, 
this scholarship will help take some of that stress off of me as I go through and finish my degree. I am in the Accelerated Nursing Program at Wilkes University. I would like to thank the Pocono Foundation and the Nursing Scholarship Committee for this opportunity. Thank you and congratulations, Kelsey. The second recipient of the Jenny Kramer Nursing Scholarship is also the 2021 recipient of the Robert A. Gordon Memorial Nursing Scholarship. The Robert A. Gordon Memorial Nursing Scholarship was created by the board after his sudden death. This memorial scholarship is given to someone annually that exemplifies outstanding nursing in the Pocono community. The endowment was established to recognize the invaluable service Mr. Gordon provided as he served on the board of the Pocono Medical Center from 1987 to 1991. On behalf of the Pocono Foundation, I would like to congratulate this year's recipient of both the Jenny Kramer and Robert A. Gordon Nursing Scholarships, our own Jennifer Hess. Hi, good evening, Pocono Foundation and Nursing Scholarship Committee. My name is Jennifer Hess. I'm the coordinator of the Infection Prevention Program at Lehigh Valley Hospital, Pocono. I've been a nurse for the last 20 years, and I've been in infection prevention for eight years. Um, I got my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing degree in 2013, and I got my Certification of Infection Control in 2017. I am currently pursuing my Master's of Science degree with a concentration in infection prevention at the American Sentinel College of Nursing and Health Sciences at Post University. My decision to continue my education was revealed through the COVID pandemic through a deeper understanding of just how important the role of infection prevention plays in healthcare and within the community. The last 15 months has changed our lives in the way that we look at infection prevention and healthcare. Infection prevention has become a solid focus in the forefront of healthcare. My goals include becoming an expert and leader in the infection prevention field and the financial assistance that you're providing to me is instrumental in allowing me to advance my career in this very important field of study. Thank you again for awarding me with these incredible scholarships. Your generosity and support will help me to become perceptive and experienced in the field to keep our patients, employees, and the community safe. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you for leading us through all of the challenges of these last 18 months with COVID. We appreciate all that you have done for us here, and Jennifer, we wish you continued success. The Dr. Elmo Lilly Memorial Healthcare Scholarship was established by the Pocono Health System Board to reward an individual that embodies the principles and dedication to healthcare that were reflected in the work and life of Dr. Elmo Lilly. Dr. Lilly committed his adult life to being a physician and providing more than diagnoses and treatment. He offered friendship, a kind word, and was passionate about his calling as a physician. The scholarship was founded on his core values and to ensure that his spirit remains a permanent pillar at LVHP Pocono, I am pleased to introduce the 2020 recipient of the Dr. Elmo Lilly Memorial Nursing Scholarship, Santiago Churion. Good evening all. My name is Santiago Turian and I am the 2021 recipient of the Dr. Elmo Lilly Healthcare Scholarship. It is my great pleasure to receive this scholarship. I am a senior at Pocono Mountain East High School and during my four years here, I have gained a better understanding of what I want to do in the future. In my sophomore year, I had the opportunity to shadow my cousin, Dr. Anciano, at the Vedant Medical Center in North Carolina. During my time here, I gained a better understanding of the doctor-patient relationship and how intimate this relationship was. During my time there, I gained a deep respect for how these doctors were able to operate on these patients and better their lives. It's something that I've always had a passionate dream about. And so with this dream and with your scholarship being bestowed upon me, I am able to pursue my dream at the University of Pittsburgh. During my time at the University of Pittsburgh, I hope to engage in multiple research opportunities as well as gain a great foundation for my medical career in becoming a cardiothoracic surgeon. 
Once again, I'd like to thank the Pocono Foundation and the Scholarship Committee for granting me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Santiago. You are an outstanding young man. Sean Cunningham was a dynamic young man of faith who touched the lives of many and brought out the best in others through his qualities of compassion, determination, and leadership. Each year, a scholarship is given to both a Notre Dame high school senior and a nursing candidate for an advanced practice degree. This year's Notre Dame recipient is Matthew James. I am now honored to present the recipient of this year's Sean P. Cunningham Memorial Nursing Scholarship for Advanced Practice Nursing, Allison Novak. Hello, my name is Allison Novak and I am the 2021 recipient of the Sean P. Cunningham Memorial Scholarship as a CRNP student. I first and foremost would like to thank the Pocono Foundation and the committee for bestowing this scholarship upon me. I began my interest in nursing when I first started caring for my grandfather who suffered from Alzheimer's as well as a few other health issues. I gave everything to him that I possibly could and through that I realized that I had more care to give and more compassion to give to people outside of those that are in my tight circle. I then went on to nursing school and began to find my true passion in women's health. Once graduating, I became a labor and delivery nurse and loved every second of it to give my full self and full compassion to all of the women that I cared for. However, I realized that there was something missing because I only got to be with those women for maybe one day or two. That led me to my current position at Lehigh Valley Health Network in Nurse Family Partnership, working with vulnerable women in the community. After working here for two years, I decided that I wanted to pursue my uh, CRNP in women's health and continue to provide the utmost best care to the vulnerable women in my area. I am currently in school to be a women's health nurse practitioner and this scholarship allows me to continue my studies and to eventually provide compassionate, trustworthy, dependable care to the women of my area and specifically those vulnerable populations. I wanna thank you again for bestowing this scholarship upon me and allowing me to do the work that I need to do in my area. Thank you. On behalf of the entire nursing team at LVHP Pocono, I would like to congratulate all of our recipients of the nursing scholarships. You are exemplar and set the example for many others to follow um, in the future of nursing. I would like to invite you to join our team when you complete your education because you are the perfect example of clinicians that we want to provide exceptional care to um, the community in Monroe County. At this time, I would like to reintroduce Bill Kramer, and I'd also like to thank him um, for his continued support and extreme generosity. Um, through your generosity, we are able to provide exceptional care to all of our patients at Lehigh Valley Hospital Pocono, and we're forever grateful. Bill. Thank you very much, Mary Ann, and thank you for those kind words. I have to tell you, it's truly an honor to be here each and every year, and we've done this for so many years. As, as I said at the outset, it's the 29th uh, of the grant and uh, scholarship uh, recognition, and uh, it's really, every year, it's, it's just such a pleasure to recognize the immense talent and commitment of our scholarship winners, and to hear their stories, and to see how it changes their life, and it gives them that opportunity to come back. And I also would like to congratulate the dedicated members of our nonprofit community. Uh, all of these charities do so much for so many, uh, and they do it with very little sometimes. So it's a, a great thing that we live in such a caring community. But I want to thank them because it's, they, do, they work so hard to make Monroe County a, just a wonderful place to live, work, and to raise our families. So kudos to them. The, uh, in closing on the remarks we have, I hope you've enjoyed what you've heard and seen today relative to the grants that were awarded as well as the scholarships. Uh, today we awarded or granted over $175,000 and most of that comes from you and the viewers of this video and uh, for wonderful supporters over all these many years because of your philanthropic and uh, generosity. 
you know, Lehigh Valley Pocono is the third largest employer in Monroe County, and it's a real economic driver and embraces a responsibility here to improve the quality of life. So it not only provides for patients and for critical care when needed, but it also provides for the nonprofits and the charities, as you've witnessed here today. And as you can see by uh, the, uh, this afternoon's presentation, your generosity is helping to change and improve the lives of so many people here in our community through the nonprofits that are, that are supported. Our scholarships assist, as was mentioned to you, assist in recruiting and the, the best and the brightest that we can in the nursing field and in the healthcare professional area, technicians and otherwise, so that we're able to continue to provide our healthcare seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days every year. I'd like to take a moment and recognize our healthcare team that has provided extraordinary care through COVID-19, the pandemic. Uh, the frontline workers and all that they've done and the, the place where they place their lives in jeopardy uh, every day to make sure they cared for all of us. I, I can't think of anything that was more giving and more blessed that we have a community where we have those essential workers who put themselves at risk for us and uh, in this very ch challenging time. And I'm hopeful that we have better days ahead. I would also like to thank the presenters here today, Annie Nevesky and uh, and for all that they did uh, in terms of preparation and, and presentation of these grants and scholarship awards. Uh, I'd like to thank Zach Booth, who's here tonight, or as this afternoon, as the engineer who's put this all together and coordinated this live presentation. Uh, he's from BRC TV 13. He's lended terrific technical advice, and uh, he's helped the foundation staff put this entire uh, video together. We hope that uh, what you saw here this afternoon has inspired you. And then in that case, if it has inspired you, we hope that you will consider supporting our programs in the future as we go along. Without your help, none of this is possible. And together, we can help make anything possible. And it wouldn't be appropriate if I didn't ask for you to, to make a gift whenever you feel so inspired, and hopefully it'll right, <clears throat> be right after this video. If you want to know how that can be done, all you need to do is look behind me. There's an email address right here, lvhn.org slash Pocono. It's on a website. You can go there and you can find out how you can donate to uh, the charities that are supported, as well as you can call 576-476, actually it's 570, 476-3530. And with that, I wish all of you have a great evening, stay safe and healthy. Take care.